knows Rodney Dangerfield is Donald Trump looking at himself in the mirror. Dangerfield. Is it worth it? Should I even do it? That's what I keep asking myself. Whether I should just stay here in Mar-a-Lago with my beautiful wife and all the golf I could ask for. Whether I should instead go back out there against my detractors and beat them at their own game. Grover Cleveland shows up behind Dangerfield. Cleveland. You've seen Biden's approval ratings. You got this in the bag. Dangerfield. I understand that, Grover. But again, is the juice worth the squeeze? Cleveland. First of all, as I told you before, it's no longer just Grover. It's Super Grover. Dangerfield. Oh, come on. What's with the corny nickname? I think it's a little cheesy. Cleveland. As I've tried to explain to you, despite your brash arrogance getting in the way, the only way I was capable of becoming the first, and so far only president, to serve two non-consecutive terms, was by doing the proper training to change from a mere mortal as Grover Cleveland to become a superman as Super Grover Cleveland. Dangerfield. What kind of training are we talking about here, Chief? At the club, there's a new import of waitresses exiled from Ukraine. I don't know if I have time for all this. Burgess Meredith then appears. Meredith, if you want to really tear into some European tail, you're going to have to get back to the top of the mountain. You're going to have to eat lightning and craft thunder. Now let's go. Bum bum ba ba bum ba ba bum 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 ba ba bum bum bum. Cuts the danger field going through a rocky training montage while joined by Meredith in Cleveland. Shows danger field running stairs, shadow boxing, lifting weights, debating behind a podium, making disabled person hand gestures. Dunna na, dunna na. Shows female wrestler Joni Laurer as China in a ring with Dangerfield. After some back and forth sparring, Dangerfield grabs her by the pussy, lifts her up and slams her down. Da na na, da na na. Cuts back to Dangerfield standing in front of the mirror, joined by Meredith in Cleveland. Dangerfield, I gotta hand it to you, Super Grover and Mickey. Meredith. It's Burgess! Dangerfield! Whatever. I gotta hand it to you guys. I feel great. I feel like I can get back out there and do this. Cleveland, you're still missing something. Dangerfield! What's that? Cleveland! You need a new nickname to go with your new superhuman persona. I already have super, so you can't take that. Let's see. Hmm... How about this? Na 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 Trump man. Dangerfield. It'll do for now. Let's see how it plays in Pennsylvania. But that's right. I'm ready to announce. Why wait? Cuts to Dangerfield behind a podium with cameras and reporters opposite him. Dangerfield. After great consideration. I am announcing what should come as no surprise. I am announcing my candidacy to return to Twitter. And live from Tom's phone, we're not alive. It's Saturday Night Live, starring an ever-evolving cast that is unionized and refuses to allow their names to be mentioned until their demands are met. Musical guest, Sid Vicious. And your hosts, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Ladies and gentlemen, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Applause, applause, applause. Siskel, thank you all so much. Ebert, we give this studio audience two thumbs up. Applause, applause, applause. Siskel. So Roger and I were wondering why we were asked to come on the show, considering our reviews. Ebert, 
I said the production showed some promise, but was mired by clutching the bathroom humor and sex jokes that lacked the normal intricacies and payoffs you'd expect to see in sketch comedy. Cisco! I said that if you can get past the narrator's jarringly scratchy voice, that whatever humor is meant to be expressed is lost on audiences that don't have the LSD-induced imaginations, as the narrator speaks too fast, and there's a lack of audio adequate direction given for an audio-only production. Ebert. So we each gave it one and a half stars, this production. But that changed when we were asked to host and get a, got a closer look. Cisco. We don't want people to think we were paid off or anything like that, but coming in and getting a host really did give us a chance to see things a little differently. Ebert. That's correct. With a greater appreciation for exactly what is going on here, having gotten a host, I'll say that I was absolutely wrong before. I said the production shows promise. It doesn't. It's bathroom humor interwoven with a narcissistic grandiosity that is so obnoxiously undeserved that its mere existence has made me consider giving up the art of critiquing altogether. Cisco! In my new review after hosting, I said that the listener should be thankful for the lack of cohesive direction given so that they have no idea what is going on. Because if they did, they would potentially lose the will to live, as it is hopelessly not funny and sophomore to the point of making me question the value of human existence. But despite Roger and I's reviews of the show, believe it or not, we do have a great show tonight. Ebert, Sid Vicious is here, so God save the Queen, because it's going to be pretty vacant. We'll be... Right back.